This video goes with section 38 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and covers the adjectives of the first and second declension. Hansen and Quinn has this on pages 89 to 91, and in the appendix on pages 603 and 627 to 629. We're going to do two sorts of Greek adjectives in this video. The first sort have different sets of endings for the masculine, the feminine, and the neuter, and so they're called three ending adjectives. In the nominative, those endings are os, a, and on, so sometimes I'll call these os, a, on adjectives. And why would they have to come in all three genders? Because just like the article, an adjective agrees with its noun in case, number, and gender every single time. So that means we need endings for all the gender genders, all the cases, and both singular and plural. Every adjective you learn will give you all genders of the nominative singular when you learn them in the vocabulary. And those endings should look familiar. The os of the second declension masculine, the a of the first declension feminine, and the on of the second declension neuter. You can see that these are all familiar endings. Os a on, u ace u, o a o, on ain on, e a on, oi i a, on on on, ois ice ois, us as a, oi i a. You know them both from learning first and second declension, and also most of them are the same as the endings of the article. Adjectives have persistent accent. Now, let's see what this looks like with a real adjective. Kalos, kale, kalon means good or beautiful or noble. And let's see how these endings have the same endings as os, a, on. Right there you see that the vocabulary gives you the masculine nominative singular, the feminine nominative singular, and the neuter nominative singular. You take off that os, a, on to get your stem. And here I've put it in all of the uh, genders and all of the cases for the singular. Now, let's give it some endings. Here I'm doing the masculine through all of the cases first, and then the feminine, and then the neuter. You can see that they are your familiar second, first, and second declension endings. It's persistent accent, and you figure out where to keep the accent for an adjective by looking at the neuter nominative singular. So in this case, Kalan wants to keep an acute on the last syllable. Let's see what that does. As usual, if it's persistent acute on the ultima in the nominative, it becomes a circumflex in the genitive and dative before, before switching back to an acute in the accusative and the vocative. Now let's look at the plural. Here are the stems, and here are all of the endings. This time, I'm just taking it across the cases. Oi, I, a, on, 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 ois, 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 us, as, a, oi, i, a. So we get kaloi, kalai, kala. And let me go ahead and put in the persistent accent so you can see, based on that neuter nominative singular, what happens when I put the accents where they go. So then we get continuing with the genitive, cologne, cologne. Kalon, kalois, kalais, kalois. Now the accusative, kalus, kalas, kala. And then vocative, kaloi, kalai, kala. Now let's see what this looks like with another adjective. Axios, axia, axion means worthy. And you see how it's got the three endings of the nominative, masculine, feminine, and neuter. And the masculine looks just like uh, we expect in the second declension, os. But because the stem of this word ends in iota, it has a long alpha instead of an eta in the feminine. And then back to the on that we expect in the neuter. 
So here's the stem for all of the endings of the singular. And let's put in all of the masculine, os, u, o, on, a. Then we have the alpha versions of the feminine first declension endings, a, as, a, on, and a. And then the neuter, on, u, a, o, on, and on. Now the plural. Oh, excuse me, persistent accent. Um, this time trying to be an acute on the third to last. And of course, as you can see, it gets pulled to the second to last when the last syllable in the different cases becomes long. Now let's do the plural. Here are the stems and here are the endings. Axioi, axiai, axia, and come to think of it, I should wait to pronounce the rest of them until we put on the accent so you can see where it moves around. So, axioi, axiai, axia, axion, 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 axiois, axiais, axiois, axius, axias, axia, and now I'm in the vocative axioi, axiai, axia. Adjectives, as you can see, don't have the exception in the feminine genitive plural that first declension nouns have. So here the accent stays happily on the stem and doesn't move into the ending. Now, for the second set of adjectives, call two ending adjectives. Some adjectives skip the endings of the feminine entirely and use the same endings for the feminine and the masculine. Most compound adjectives do this. So you'll learn those adjectives with just two endings in the nominative singular. Os for both masculine and feminine and on for the neuter and they'll decline in the second declension. So here are all the endings and they're really just the same as the ones you've already learned both in the second declension and now for all of the adjectives. But this time all of those masculine ones will serve for both masculine and feminine versions of the adjective. So even if you need to modify a feminine noun, and even if it's in a feminine first declension, you'll still use these masculine second declension looking endings for the adjective. And again, this has persistent accent. Let's try it with a real adjective. Adikos, adikon, means unjust. And it is a compound, a for the unpart, and the dikos root that means just. So it's a two-ending adjective. Here we have our chart, and here we have our stems that we get by just taking off that os on. And now we'll put in the endings. Again, these are all second declension endings, and we'll end up using the masculine-looking ones for both masculine and feminine uses in our sentences when at these adjectives are modifying feminine nouns. It has persistent accent. Again, as with most adjectives, all adjectives, it's based on the neuter nominative singular, and so we know that this wants to be an acute on that third to last syllable on that alpha if it can be. But of course in practice, because the endings change quantity, sometimes that acute is going to move around. Now that you know those endings, you're ready to make sure that you follow the critical rule about adjectives. That they agree with their nouns in case, in number, and in gender every single time. So Hey, Kale, Nike, the good victory. That looks nice and easy because, you know, all those endings match up. They're all nice first declension. But they also match in case, nominative, number, singular, and gender, feminine. Tain, Kale, Hodon also follows the rule case, accusative, number, singular, and genitive, feminine. But of course, this time, the endings aren't all matchy matchy. They have different spellings, but they still meet the criteria, the cardinal rule, that they match in case, number, and gender. 
Te adico nike also follows the rule. Case, dative, number, singular, gender, feminine. But the endings aren't all matchy-matchy because adico is a two-ending adjective, and so it has that second declension ending, but it is still a feminine ending, and it agrees in case, number, and gender. And one more so you can see a little bit of neuter, ta, kaka, erga, the evil deeds. And again, they match in case, number, and gender. This time they also happen to match in their spelling, but it follows the cardinal rule of adjectives. There, just a taste of what you're capable of now that you know the endings of adjectives of the first and second declension. Now, go practice and read Greek.